right. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mon Solson. I'm the game director on Minecraft Dungeons. And hello, everyone. My name is David Nishagen. I'm the executive producer for Minecraft Dungeons. All right. Well, first of all, uh, congratulations. Um, I know uh, you guys hit 10 million players. Was that like recent, like a couple of days ago, right? Or a couple of weeks ago or so? Um, yeah. I, I've been, let me tell you, I've been playing this game nonstop uh, actually during quarantine. I have three games that I've been playing a lot. It's been Animal Crossing, Streets of Rage 4, and Minecraft Dungeons. Those are the three games I've been playing a lot during quarantine. So thank you for, for releasing a, a very cool game. Uh, but let's talk about the the early stages when you guys started working on this game. Like, how you guys came up with the idea? Because this is like a totally different genre for you guys. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. Um, <clears throat> so um, it started as we had a team uh, that was looking for a new project, and uh, around that t time we were thinking about um, what game. Uh, to make for the Nintendo 3DS. We actually wanted to make a 3DS game to start with. And uh, Jens, our chief creative officer, and a couple of other people at the company were talking about this idea of a dungeon crawler at the time, uh, because it's a genre that we love. Uh, we love playing games like this. Um, and we thought that Minecraft was kind of a, a natural fit in that you do all this delving into caves, finding monsters, finding treasure. Um, <clears throat> And so we started looking at that, and then um, as we were working on it, we realized that it'd be fun to play it on a lot more platforms. Um, and uh, around that time, the Switch also came out, and, and we figured it was a great fit for all of the platforms and, and sort of scoping it up and making it a big multiplayer dungeon crawler. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And for you, David? Yeah, I mean... It, it, I was not there during the first 3DS part of it, and I love that piece of the story. I mean, who who in their really sane mind would design a game specifically? I love the 3DS, I always have, but it is a, it is a very, very constrained platform. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the Switch came out, and the other platforms are growing bigger and stronger, etc. But, but what I leaned into when I first saw the game in its early version, so to speak, it was like, this is a fun game to play together. I, there, there is something there about, you know, fighting monsters together, working together, helping each other out in a cooperative way that, that felt like it could have this sort of magic potential. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm super happy that we sort of leaned into that. And I think... Uh, the team and Mons have done a great job in, in making that sort of cooperative experience uh, really good. Yeah. Was there any time that you guys thought that this was not going to be a big hit? Because um, 10 million players is a lot. It's a lot of people, man. <laughs> you know, so what, was there a any any like thoughts right before the game come out? Like, man, do you think this is going to be a huge success like like the like a Minecraft game? Um. I mean, it's always scary to release a new game. Mm -hmm. um, we initially, when we started working on it, um, uh, it was a really big ask of the team, I think, to take on this. It's the first internally developed uh, Minecraft spin-off, uh, or it started that way. It wasn't the first to come out, but it was the first to start being developed. Um, and that's a it's a scary thing to do because we have a big community of very dedicated, passionate players who know a lot about the game. Uh, often more than we do uh, and um to to kind of approach that and and hope that you make something that's that feels worthwhile and that is true to minecraft and that's also just a fun game uh that's definitely scary i think it was scary all up until the point where we started demoing the game so when we took it to to e3 and showed it behind the scenes to journalists and then uh, primarily when we went to Gamescom and and showed it to players, we we had uh, kind of lines of players lining up to play the game at the consoles, um, and that's when we. I don't want to say feel felt safe. That that's never true. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's when we started realizing that uh, maybe this will work. You know. Yeah. <laughs> And I, and I think also you guys probably got people that have never played Minecraft and this is like their first Minecraft game. And I, I'm one of them, you know, so because of my, my nephews, um, they love 
they love Minecraft, right? And I tried to play it, and I was like, okay, this this game is not for me. But I feel like playing Minecraft Dungeons, I was like, okay, this this is for me, right? And I've been hooked. I've been hooked ever since. So you probably are surprised, probably, that there's probably a, a, a whole crowd that have never played Minecraft before. This is like the first one for them, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that that's... <laughs> I mean, Minecraft in itself, it's such a magnificently large and wonderful game, right? It's huge. It, it has sold so many copies, I can't quite remember, right? It's in the hundreds of millions. And if our sort of job is to find new game experience and then try to, try to make an interesting experience for people just like you, right? Who are not really into Minecraft, but looking for something else. Mm -hmm. How can we make that happen? and still make it very, very Minecraft. Because Minecraft Dungeons is very, very Minecraft, even though you don't do the, the sort of creative world building in an open world, procedurally generated sandbox mm -hmm. that Minecraft is. But it still feels very Minecraft when you play it. Mm -hmm. I think um, this, um, uh, this idea, I mean, we've felt fairly safe uh, in the assumption that we'd get some Minecraft players to try this new Minecraft game. Uh, but the idea of can we get players who like the style of game, uh, who are perhaps uh, uh, like enjoying what this game brings to the table, can we bring them into the Minecraft franchise? Uh, that was a question we, we didn't have uh, such a solid answer to, and uh, we didn't know whether that was going to work. But fortunately for us, it has, and that's obviously what we were hoping for. And, and what were like the biggest challenges working on this game for you, for you and the team? Oh, there has been a lot. Um, I mean, initially, um, it it was never started as a very large team and with a very you know big, huge product vision of what we're gonna do. It was started in the same way, in the same sort of indie roots that started Minecraft from the beginning, mm -hmm. bu building stuff gradually with super talented, passionate team members. And then if you if you zoom out and look at the, the sort of blunt reality, all right, so we're actually literally targeting, you know, PC, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Xbox. We're doing this, oh, Oh, oops. Okay, looks like we got new generation consoles coming out here as well. So the support we can get from our partners at Sony and Xbox, they're going to pay a lot of attention to to the next generation consoles. And how do we all of that complexity in a team that in its heart is this passionate team of almost well very experienced and very talented but but indies at heart right mm -hmm. i think that was the biggest challenge and then you take like we need to meet these requirements we need to pass the sony trc's or the xbox requirements and oh, what we can't just ship the game because we we think it's good now or we think we have external requirements and and that's a mindset that's slightly challenging when when mojang from the beginning have had the ability to we build things and we release it using our own launcher straight out to players without you know uh, it, it makes the focus so much on yourself being being accountable to to making a great user experience now then with with um uh, using slightly more restricted platforms like consoles there's other gates and balances and checks you need to meet as well and that's mm -hmm. that's a challenge for like an indie passionate super fast moving mindset mm. yeah, what about you Mont? Um I, I definitely agree that um releasing on all these platforms as one at once is is a big technical hurdle um and certainly something that uh many of us haven't done before at least not on this scale so that's mm. uh that is probably the biggest one uh, from a game design perspective i think it's just this overall like constantly um present question of does it feel like minecraft uh is it true to to what vanilla minecraft is um and and can we satisfy minecraft players in terms of uh, lore in terms of uh, all of those things mm -hmm. um it's been 
it's been scary at times uh, because we're doing some new things and we're pushing some boundaries when it comes to Minecraft world building. Um, uh, I think it's resonated pretty well with players, but it's that wasn't always a given, I think. So that has been a challenge. And, and where were you guys when you heard you got 10 million players already in the game? <laughs> were you were at home, working, or what? <laughs> Well, the combination, right? Working from home. Yes, uh, yes. I think if, if if there was one biggest challenge of everything, it was, of course, when the whole, uh, you know, COVID-19 hit. And that was in Sweden then. It was in March, right? Yes. And then I think our, our, our release date was in April. And we were like, we how do we even bring home computers? How do we do this thing? Even with all that support that we got from from like Mojang and Microsoft, etc., to uh, and partners Sony and, and Nintendo as well to do this, it's still like, how can we overcome this this change of sitting together and just you know having the the idea generation at the coffee machine and helping each other out face to face to now sitting at home and trying to work from home? Mm -hmm. That was one of the one of the major uh, hurdles and, and, and challenges. Um, Mm. Yeah, I think obviously finding out uh, that we that we had ten million players was fantastic. Uh, uh, <laughs> speaking 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 for myself, I mean, um, <laughs> I I would have been at home working on the Nether update uh, because um, we we want to take time to celebrate victories, but we also want to make sure that we deliver ongoing content to our players, and mm -hmm. that's not something that just ends when you ship a game. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it feels, yeah. it feels like, yes, yeah, a celebration, but also like the pressure is pretty high now because there's a lot of people that 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 like the game, they've been playing the game, that also support the game. So has it has it been pressure for for you guys? Like the pressure has been high because of that too, for you and the team. For sure. I mean, uh, we we've worked. Um, hard to make sure that we we keep as a constant a stream of updates as possible mm -hmm. um going out to players and um that's also because that's how we would want to see the the game handled as players i mean mm -hmm. most of us uh play a lot of other games in our spare times and we have the same sort of expectations and and hopes for for products that uh players would have mm. um, yeah yeah, and I, I can chime in there a little bit. It, it was never a given that it would become such a big thing. I, it, it was this, I, I won't say it was a total surprise either, because obviously it, it has a couple of the, the sort of, the recipe is there. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a charming genre, and it's a strong brand, and it's a really good team. So it should work. But then uh, I, I think it did a little bit better than we expected, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And that that has also in, added a bit of pressure, not as much being put on us externally from someone else, but but as Mons mentions, like, mm -hmm. okay, we, we have a lot of players, we have a lot of fans, we, we want to try to do things, you know, right. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have a I have a couple of questions about about the updates since launch and now, and one of them is is like I know you guys added a crossplay. I think that's that's wonderful because I have friends and family that don't have an Xbox, uh, so it's good to to play other people from different different um, platforms and stuff. So why is there no or why they ha you guys haven't launched the cr cross progression? Because I'm a huge fan of. Uh, well, before COVID, but I I love traveling and everything, right? So when I travel, I always take my Nintendo Switch. So a game like this, I would love to go and take my Switch with me, but also I want to take all the saves and everything that I have from my Xbox version. So why uh, is there any update about that? Like, are you guys planning to release in the future or or what? David, wanna... <laughs> yes, I can take that. Yeah. Yes, we're definitely looking into it. Uh, obviously, that's one of the things that we we really want to do. Originally, we wanted to have crossplay at launch day, but it's a really, really complicated thing to build. It's like there is so many 
um, even if you get a lot of help from the partners and uh, with Sony, Nintendo, and Xbox, mm -hmm. it's still this web of complexity that is takes a lot of time to get right. And it takes a lot of time to uh, both make sure you check all the boxes and make everybody happy, but also that it's a good use experience. And uh, the sort of cross-platform progression where you can carry on like you, you, what you have done, at least on one character, that's a similar similar hurdle. Uh, it's it's harder than you'd think. So we have been working on it for some time and, and we're doing good progress. I can't say any dates or anything. Okay, that's but right. we're, no, but but we are actively working on it. All right, that's good. At, at least that's an update. That's good. <laughs> that's really really good. Uh, but let's Something talk about that we want to. Oh, for sure. Uh, so uh, let, let's talk about um, uh, just the updates that you guys have been doing since the launch of the game. I know you guys added uh, uh daily trials, uh, new levels. Let, let's talk about that. Who, who wants to? Uh, talk about that yeah, yeah i can i can talk about that yeah. so um and one thing that has been key to us in in order to deliver these updates is to combine the work of multiple teams um which i think uh, maybe isn't so visible to players but it's been really important to us so we have the team in stockholm that's the core team working on the game uh we were very focused on shipping and then we have a, a development partner, a company called Double Eleven in the UK, um, that have uh, been working with us on the base game, but also on a lot of the content for some of these DLCs. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, working together with them, um, we were able to sort of reach the the cadence that we wanted. Um, specifically on the features, I think. Um, an important thing to us has been to make sure that alongside the paid DLCs we launch, we also launch significant free updates to our players. Um, we really want to make sure that even if you don't pay for additional DLC as you play the game, um, you get an ongoing stream of new content or new features. Um, and that just keeps the game alive and makes it more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so the daily trials specifically, they were definitely just that. So that's something that we were hoping to add as, as soon as possible after launch um, as a method to bring something new to the game every day. Uh, we wanted to have it these kind of wonky, if you will, rule sets uh, of uh, you spawn five pets instead of spawning one pet, or all of your arrows are fireworks arrows, so there's explosion, all, explosions all over the screen, and kind of make the gameplay itself the reward to some extent. Uh, obviously, we know that's not what every player wants, so we also made sure to add some reward rewards in there. Uh, mm. Something something to chase that was exclusive to the daily trials. Um, but that was kind of the idea behind them. Um, similarly, um, the vendors that we updated in a big patch um, came out of a similar sort of idea of, of how do we want to change the game to... to make it something that will last for longer where the players have a little bit more agency over mm -hmm. what items they encounter um yeah oh, cool yeah cool. and i mean the, the the sort of dlcs we, we try to focus them around like an area and, and as, as more sense i think the most important thing is that to combine this here's something you can pay for if you want to and here's something that's free for everyone so there is always an interest to just go back to the game and check it out and uh, we try to theme these so they made sense together to be combined. And as, as with them, the paid DLCs is more focused on expanding the game world with new new biomes, as we say in Minecraft language, like so. Mm -hmm. Adding jungle or or adding like winter and ice biomes or or mountain areas. And then as we get, you know, better and better, as we do more of these content um, content, we get better and better at it. So we've added more and more puzzly elements as we found that hey this is kind of cool and fun to do and it's something that players want so having that continuous growth of both like the world the features and in combination with these free uh, features and content i think it's worked out really well and yeah, it's yeah. continuing to do so 
Yeah, that's the first thing I do. That's the first thing I do always is check out the the trials (laughs) every day. (laughs) So that's good. A final quick thing on that topic um, is that uh, obviously we want to listen to player feedback as well. So uh, when we launched the game, I mean, we had an idea of what the first couple of updates were going to be. because it takes a while to develop it, develop them, and you have to work on them for for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we wanted to also make sure that we saw what happened at the launch of the game, and and see how players reacted, what features were they missing, um, were they not running low on arrows, you know, all of those kind of kinds of things, and then integrate as much of, as possible of that feedback into our updates. Um, you, you know, one cool idea that, that I was thinking about the other day, I was like, man, it would be cool if they could add something like a uh, like a weekend or time-limited event that the community will get involved. Uh, maybe uh, you have to get a, a certain amount of kills or a certain amount of loot dropped, and maybe we'll unlock something, you know, rare in the game or something like that. You know, do you see something to do? Some, do you think guys would do something like that in the future of, like, just, like, special events or... Some type like that for for Minecraft Dungeons. I think it will be awesome to get people more involved together as, as a community. What do you think? It, it's certainly something that we've thought a little bit about. I'm I'm hesitant to to promise features at this point uh, because, mm-hmm. um, it, uh, again, they take time to develop, yeah. and we have to prioritize between a list of all these things that we want to do, and that list is long. So <laughs> there are a lot mm-hmm. of things that we'd love to add to the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I can safely say that for me, that would be one of them, uh, mm-hmm. something along those lines. Uh, but whether it's going to show up or exactly when, that would be, that's not something that I can say now. No, just a request, that's all. I think it's, I can, it's really cool. I can chime in a little bit there. We, we, we did an experiment. Um, we, we tried to see what we could do for uh, Lost Halloween. We had like an in-game event called uh, Spooky Fall. Mm-hmm. And there was like some um, unique things, unique challenges, unique versions of daily trials, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there was some unique themed rewards you could get. And that seemed to resonate quite well with players. Players seemed to like that. And we did a, we did a similar thing for, for over the, um, the holidays. We did something winter themed or Christmas themed perhaps. Um, and then try to tie it a little bit together in a theme, so it made made a bit of um, made a bit of sense, and that also worked. We saw positive positive feedback on it, and personally, I also love that sort of thing. Right, it's so fun to go in and have this. Here's a clear goal, and I can choose to do it, but we want to be mindful so it doesn't become like a mandatory thing that you have a real fear of missing out that you feel that it's a negative motivation i'd love to think of 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 these sort of things as a positive reminder that hey here's a really fun core gameplay you just enjoy playing the game and here's a bit of extra just to get you back in yeah totally agree but it's good it's good to see that people are really into this stuff so so that's really cool really cool but let's talk about the new update this is the biggest update for you guys ever in the game so what is it what what's new in the uh, of with this update that's come, that came out today actually? Yeah, that's a that's a long list of things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, How long time so, do you have? Yeah. <laughs> so, so kind of uh splitting it up into uh uh what's in the free update and and what's in the paid DLC uh, a little bit. Um we have a free update where we're launching uh, a massive new feature for us called Ancient Hunts uh which is something that I wanted to do for a very long time. Uh, we have a lot of people that have worked very hard on it. I think it's just a very fun thing. Mm-hmm. And it's these procedurally generated missions uh, that are kind of stitched together and weaves in and out of the nether and the overworld. Um, and then you don't get regular loot drops. You only get gold, which is a new purely in-game currency, and these new items called gilded items, um, which I guess we can talk about in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then alongside of that, we've also rebalanced Apocalypse Plus, which is our top end difficulty. Um, so we've stretched it out and uh, made some changes to make it a little bit more accessible, a little bit easier, um, while also gating progress 
so that you have to defeat bosses to progress through Apocalypse Plus. And together, these two systems, I think, combine uh, and give you a more interesting end game, kind of more interesting rewards to find, more things to chase down. There's a lot of player agency in how you get into these ancient hunts because you sacrifice items with combinations of runes and you invest your enchantment points. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other part is the pay DLC, which is uh, six all new missions set in the in the nether. Uh, and in those missions, uh, there are also um, lots of new gear, new artifacts to find. Um, some of my favorite artifacts, personally, I think all of the new four that we're launching in this update are really fun to use. Um, and we've really tried to make sure to enable a, a bigger, more diverse set of character builds in this update. Yeah. So the new the new gear and artifacts are one thing. Uh, another part of that puzzle is rebalancing existing ones. And then we've added a lot of new enchantments. I think it's 12 or 13, something along yeah, that line. 13. Mm -hmm. um, to really uh, scale up what you can do, uh, which, which types of play styles you can have. I think that w one of my personal favorites there is that, that this is one of the areas where we can actually see how players play. And we see that we had a sort of a vision of how, what sort of archetypes people would tend to gravitate to, where, where players would like to. We think, here's a ranged sort of, we want to make sure you can play as a ranged character or as a tank character, sort of the standard play, ways of playing. But one of them was like, my favorite is, is like pets. And I think we added a lot this time, a lot of both interesting enchantments and then um, balancing and, and changing up gear and artifacts. So you can actually equip yourself now to be being like a beast master, <laughs> having a big bunch of pets running around and feeling really powerful. That's how I prefer to play. So I'm, I'm super happy about both doing it right now, but also on the, on the path there. This is something that's not quite viable, and now we make it viable. I love that sort of thing. And then also being able to put that in this very, very rich new context of, of like um, previous DLCs have been like three new levels. This has six new levels, so it's like twice as big. And the ancient hunt system is, I, I love it and I hate it. It's this risk reward thing. Do I actually want to sacrifice this item? Yeah, I do. And then you get a better reward in the end. I know. Uh you mentioned about the difficulty because there's people that will play the game, finish the game and then move on. Right. And there's some like me that will continue and play. Now is the end game. Now it's like, okay, what else, what other type of loot we could get? And we'll play it in, in a more difficult level of uh, difficulty. Right. But you mentioned that with this update, you made it a little bit accessible and easier for players. Why, why the change? Cause I feel like I, I love the challenge, you know? So <laughs> So. I, yeah. Okay. Let me uh, let me be a bit more specific on that because I I could uh, dive into a lot of details. But yeah. Um, basically, um, we saw that with the old Apocalypse Plus, we had designed it, um, explicitly to create an almost impossible challenge. The idea, uh, the design goal was for very few players to ever reach the highest Apocalypse Plus twenty difficulty. Most players should stop somewhere along the way or kind of hit the soft soft cap somewhere along the way and feel like um, there is something to strive for. There is the next difficulty beyond the horizon. And while that did work for some players, for other players, they found ways to, to get all the way to the end very quickly by running our shorter and easier missions, for example, like Arch Haven, uh, which is a secret mission in the game. Mm -hmm. And then our design goal of this is, this should be almost overly difficult created a problem instead instead it was a little bit too hard and players would only run certain missions that were the ones that were easy enough to play at that difficulty and we want players to be able to enjoy all of the different content in the game uh, to feel like it's uh, a legitimate strategy to to vary to vary up which missions you play and so mm -hmm. we low lowered the overall 
top end difficulty a little bit, reduce the damage of the mobs, reduce their health, reduce their movement speed. Um, but at the same time, we introduce this restriction that you, to progress through it, you have to play boss missions, which are often some of the hardest in the game. So to unlock plus 22, which is the last unlock step in the new progression, uh, you have to complete seven different boss missions in the game. Uh, if you don't own any DLC, that's all of the various boss missions. They have to play all of them to get to plus 22. Uh, and that should still be a real challenge. Then separately from that, we have the ancient hunts. And the ancient hunts have uh, sort of randomly generated constellations of enemies based on the items that you input into an ancient hunt. Uh, and that means you can see all new constellations of enemies you have never seen before. So suddenly you might get an enemy from the jungle DLC, like uh, the Leaper, Leap Leaf, this big hulking monster, um, together with the Iceologer from uh, the Creeping Winter DLC. Mm -hmm. And when you start seeing new combinations like that, suddenly your old strategies don't quite work out the same way. And it turns out that when you get these random uh, constellations of enemies with slightly different play patterns, uh, including the new nether enemies, suddenly it gets quite hard. So I definitely don't think it's a cakewalk to play uh, Ancient Hunts at Apocalypse Plus 25. Uh, I think it's still a real challenge. Okay, that good. We've rebalanced it so that more builds are viable to do it with. There's, You don't have to play the one cookie cutter strategy. Um, it's, it's still hard. All right, good. Still hard. good. I'm good. I'm good with that. <laughs> now, now, what makes this uh, this new levels different than the previous levels that is in the game already? Um, should, should I go again? You uh, take it go. away. You, you're the <laughs> right. expert on the difference here. I mean, so um, all of the Nether missions, the the new uh, paid missions, are highly procedural uh, in the sense that we've made them from sort of small building blocks and we have many of them so you get lots of side paths and lots of like little interesting twirly uh, pathways things like that and then the ancient hunts they use those same environments partly and um, they also go into environments that you already know from the overworld and uh, some brand new environments that are also set in the overworld, but aren't part of uh, any other missions that you can play. You only get them in the ancient hunts. Um, and so you get all of these different uh, environments, and you play through three of them at a time. So you go through one, you go through a portal, you get the next one, and then you go through a portal, and then you get to the next one after that. And along the way, you may find these doors with a blue light glowing out of them, which is where the ancient mobs can be found. And you won't always get an ancient mob there, uh, but you do sometimes. And when you do, that should be a real challenge. Uh, some of them are easier than others. Uh, some of them are incredibly difficult, actually, and, and kind of a little bit frustrating. Uh, which I think is fine uh, as long as you have the right variety. Mm -hmm. um, and they're kind of how we think about bosses in this update. So unlike our previous DLCs, there's not one big uh, final boss. Instead, we have these uh, 15 or so ancient mobs that are uh, really, really powerful enemies that are quite tricky to beat. And when you defeat them, you get gilded gear, um, which is the best items that I mean, they're the best items that you can get in the game. Good, good. I, I, I saw David smiling when you were mentioning about these are some tough <laughs> levels to and <laughs> tough boss. Yeah, I mean, so, some of that. I, I have a yeah. couple of these ancient mobs. I just my strategies are like they're useless, I just can't beat them. They're like some of them. I got it down, right? They, they suit me in my play style. And, yeah. and that's sort of the beauty of, of this ancient hunt system that you can, to some extent, direct a little bit what you're going to see and encounter. So by, by sacrificing 
different items and different types, you can sort of tweak, not with a guarantee, but you can tweak the numbers to your advantage, or usually for me a disadvantage then, because I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd also like to chime in with, with one more thing regarding like the new levels and the new, the, the sort of world. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunningly beautiful. Every time I start up the game, I, I find something that makes my jaw drop because, and, and I've been playing this for some time, right? We've been developing this for some time. There is so much in, in what Mons mentions as well. It's, it's much more procedural. So it's these puzzle pieces that are put together a bit on the fly. And some of these puzzle pieces that you don't see, you see them rarely. <laughs> and then it, it feels so rich and so diverse in, in, in all these environments. And the Nether is such an iconically cool environment in Minecraft. And the dungeon's interpretation is is absolutely gorgeous. I, I love it. Yeah, we, we're almost done here. We, we, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say a lot of credit should go to the to the vanilla team as well. They did an amazing job updating the Nether and introducing all these very cool biomes mm -hmm. in the recent update of of vanilla Minecraft. And so we've we've had a great source of inspiration to pull from and and, and reinterpret for dungeons. Yeah. So so how was it for you guys to get the right music for those for each levels and and the situation where there's like bosses? Because it's sometimes it, it could get a little stressful, you know, hearing that. The music going like you know dark or kind of crazy when it's like a boss battle you know so how was it finding like the right track for that for each of those moments in the game for you guys because it's really cool the music i think a big part of that is just we have a fantastic audio team um um with our sound director and in-house composer and in-house uh, uh sound designer mm -hmm. and uh a lot of that work has been made very independently by that team. Um, I think they know their craft very well. They've made the a lot of the sort of ambiences and, and sound effects and whatnot for vanilla Minecraft. Um, they have a very strong idea about how to interpret that into dungeons, uh, to, to make it scary, to make it... Um, Stressful, like, moody, <laughs> intense, and yes. stressful. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, a lot, a lot of credit to them for that. Yeah. No, it's really cool. So, is there is there new music for for the for the new DLC too, or no? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh. Every DLC has a quite rich tapestry of of music, and mm -hmm. um, it's also fun with with the the audio team that they're super talented and super passionate, and when you hear them spin off. And, and go into their 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 like <laughs> beast mode. What do you call it? But when they're just being genius and they spin off and oh, I know, I know who we should work with to do this, give this specific feeling. And they have these partners that they can can work with as well mm -hmm. and align with. So so we have some great partners that have also done some music and, and atmosphere work for the nether. And I mean, we try to put up all of the soundtracks for all the DLCs in the game up on the various music streaming services. So definitely go and check it out on Spotify or Apple Music or or, or whatever service you use. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, good, you, good vibes, good vibes for sure. If you search for Flames of the Nether, uh, that should all be there. It's it's a really lengthy soundtrack, actually. There's a lot of new music produced for this. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to wrap it up here, but I have one more question for you guys. And also a, a, a tip for me, because uh, I'm always playing, and I feel like sometimes I, I'm not getting the right root loot, so I, I need some some tips. <laughs> How can I get better loot in the game? And then I have one more question. You should not ask me. I'm such a miserable... I'm, I'm in your boat, right? I'm sitting there, cool, I got something, I got a unique, it's useless. Yes, yes. I happens to you all the time. <laughs> yeah. I think with the with the gilded loot, um, um, so the gilded items are are versions of commons or rares or uniques, but with an extra built-in enchantment on top of that. Um, so that's what makes them so powerful. And um, which ancient mobs you encounter during an ancient hunt is something that you can control by by being specific and mindful about what you put into that ancient hunt as we start it. Um, 
And that was also part of what we wanted to do with this update. We wanted to give players some agency. So now they can sort of set up their own mission where I want to play and find this specific ancient mob because I know that it's likely to drop these specific gilded items. So if you want to find that fighter's bindings or uh, if you want to find an axe, uh, then you have a method of, of increasing your chances of doing so. Yeah, good, good, good to know. Now, my last question is, since you guys started working on this project, what has been like the, the favorite part for you working on this on Minecraft Dungeons? What, what I couldn't quite hear you there. Oh, yeah, what, what was it? Cut. Okay, sorry, maybe it's breaking up. Now, what was has been like your favorite part working on this project since since you started working on, on Minecraft Dungeons for you guys? Was there any any cool moments or 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 feature or anything in the game that you're like, man, this is I'm proud of this. I'm I'm, I'm proud of this. You know, there's a couple. I think. I mean, starting out and just like doing the uh, when we start started prototyping it, just thinking of like we just take Minecraft and we just kind of spin the camera up and make it third person and seeing how that plays um, was very interesting and, and all the early developments from then on and figuring out like how does enchantments from Minecraft translate into this game and, and things like that. Um, and then I think a big one is first seeing players enjoy it. And and that kind of it, it was it happened gradually. Uh, and the very first thing was we invited a few select people to our office to play the game. Um, from then we uh, we did the E3 demo and the Gamescom demo. And at Gamescom, just you know seeing lines of of actual real people uh, playing your game, having fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, some of them getting back into the line and and wanting to play again. Uh, that's that's an amazing feeling. It's uh, certainly not something that I'd experienced in that way before, and it's it a lot of fun. That's awesome. And what about you, David? Yeah, I, I share that moment with with um, the first time we were so nervous, and we we had so high ambitions of what we wanted to show on on the sort of the show floor demo show floor, mm -hmm. and we we put in so much effort in trying to get something great to show, and then you you have all this sort of oh stress and then you go in there and it's like oh my god it's people and they like it they really like it and, and you could just feel th this sort of weight on your shoulders like it works they not they not only like it they love it they go back into the queue and if you've been on one of these game shows you know that those queues they're long that's like if you put yourself in a queue you do that for a reason because you're going to be there for a while and, and and that was such uh, probably the greatest experience um i think but then in general one thing that has been very special for me on this project has been the team and the rallying and the passion that the team has um i think that is a rare thing and i think it's it's something i hope other game development teams can also experience this passion and um working together towards a single goal and just automatically honing in on what's important that that is something that i i uh, i feel super happy about one of my favorite moments and it's like an ongoing moment that's the best part yeah yeah now i just want to say uh, uh first of all congrats and thank you so much for taking your time uh from your busy schedule to be here and, and to talk about minecraft man i love I love the the story. I love the early 3DS story. Yeah, that was really cool, and I can't wait for the future. I can't wait. What type of new features and new content you guys are gonna, you have planned for 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 the game uh, later? Hopefully later this year or, or in the future, man. So, uh, thank you, thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you, uh, and, thank and you same, we you. can't wait either. I mean, we want to keep putting out putting out interesting content and features, and we just hope that. I just like it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Definitely. All right. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. All right. Cool.